Over the next few videos, we're going to explore the semen effect, which was uh, reported in 1896 before the advent of quantum mechanics. And this is the observation, the semen effect is the observation that when atoms are placed in a uniform and static magnetic field, their spectral lines are split like this. So uh, when they're not in the presence of magnetic field, you observe, for example, one spectral line. And when you expose them to a magnetic field, you observe this splitting of the one spectral line. To put it another way, uh, the energy levels of the atoms are shifted in the presence of a uniform magnetic field. So in this video, we're going to introduce and set the stage for, for this effect. And over the next few videos, we'll uh, treat this, uh, this new effect through perturbation theory. Uh, so the, the explanation for these observations actually rests on the fact that the external field, uh, the external magnetic field interacts with the magnetic moments associated with the orbital angular momentum and the spin angular momentum of the electron. So we'll, for simplicity, we'll treat this problem for hydrogen. Um, and the idea is the magnetic field interacts with the magnetic moments. that are associated with uh, the orbital angular momentum of the electron and the spin angular momentum of the electron. So this is spin and then this is orbital angular momentum. Uh, these are usually denoted by mu L, and it's a vector for the orbital angular momentum and mu s for the spin angular momentum. And we've already seen that through classic semi-classical arguments, we can get expressions for each one of these that uh, turn out to be correct. So the magnetic moment associated with orbital angular momentum is given by minus E to M times the uh, angular momentum vector. Here E is the charge of the electron and M is the mass of the electron, we'll call it ME. And the magnetic moment associated with the spin has this extra factor of two that we saw in the treatment of spin orbit coupling and depends on the spin angular momentum. And we know that in the presence of a magnetic field, uh, the magnetic moments will result in a, in a potential energy. So that our Hamiltonian, which we'll call the Siemen Hamiltonian will be the sum of the orbital magnetic moment and the spin magnetic moment, dot product with our magnetic field. And this is just the usual expression for the potential energy of a magnetic moment and magnetic field is always mu dotted with B. So substitu substituting in the expressions for these two quantities, we get the following expression for our Zeeman Hamiltonian. And this one we'll call uh, we'll start referring to this as the external magnetic field. So it'll have a subscript EXT. 
by convention, because this is a uniform magnetic field, we are going to take uh, the Z axis to point in the same direction as the magnetic field. And we're free to do this because we're always free to choose the orientation of our coordinate system. So this is if the magnetic field is going in this direction, it has to be uniform. So it all points in one direction. We're just saying that this is the direction uh, of the Z axis. In that case, the Seaman Hamiltonian reduces to the following expression. This is external. And B naught is the magnitude of our external magnetic field. The LZ and SC are the uh, operators for the Z projection of the orbital angular momentum and the Z projection of the, sp of the spin. And they come about from the dot product. Uh, so only the Z component survive because the magnetic field only has a Z component. So this is our starting point for treating the Seaman effect. Uh, however, our treatment will critically depend on the magnitude of the magnetic field uh, relative to the strength of the magnetic field already experienced by the electron in the hydrogen atom. And in the, in the next video, we'll estimate what this internal magnetic field is and break up the problem of the Seaman effect into three separate uh, situations. Uh, which will correspond to having a weak external magnetic field, an intermediate magnetic field, and a strong magnetic field.